What's going on everybody? Alex with you here again. Good to see everybody back. Now if it looks to you like the background in this video is about the same as the background to the previous video, well that's because I'm at the same park. Actually I kind of like this park even though the weather it's like 93 degrees outside right now and it's just it's kind of toasty. It's a nice park and uh, just finding a nice locale like this to be able to to share cool chess stuff with you without people walking around constantly is, is always a tricky, tricky part. But either way, let's go ahead and get started. You know, sometimes we get upset about the weather, whether it's like really hot outside or really cold or it's raining. Um, we get out of the car and it's starting to rain and we're rushing, running away, you know, running home, running to the store. Um, because we've, we've trained our, our, our mind that whenever it's cold, we are we're gonna be shaking and we're gonna be upset whenever it's hot we're gonna be upset and sweating and you know whenever it's raining we're we're not we're displeased but I remember when I used to run a lot last year and I would get caught in running in the rain and then so so you're running and first you're kind of starting to get a little wet uh, because the rain's starting to pick up and then all of a sudden the rain just takes off and you're drenched and like everything all the layers of clothing that you have are drenched and at that point you're just like you continue to run because you're you're like okay i got like three more miles i need to run and it doesn't bother you anymore and it doesn't like it, it at that point you're just kind of like i don't need to be upset at the weather conditions and i ran in situations where it was cold and the first you know three uh first 10 minutes or so you're running and you're just like I, I really wish that wind wouldn't blow so hard in my face while I'm trying to run and exercise. But then you realize, like, it's part of life and it's part of being able to feel the reality that you actually, like, I remember the, the nights that I would train and run and you run one way and the wind's going with you so you don't feel the wind, but you turn around and you start running back and that wind, that harsh cold wind just hits you right in the face right through your clothes and you're just like whoo and and it feels good that's the cool part about it is that if you let it if you believe that it feels good it's about feeling then it just kind of goes through you and you're like i'm actually able to feel you know it's like when i used to r drive back and during the winters from college i would roll my window down all the way and i'd have my my hand right out just uh, driving down the highway i'd have my hand out and the hand would feel that cold uh, you know icy cold wind just go through it and I loved it. I love that feeling I don't know what it is, but you feel you know We're always so trying to be so comfortable and trying to shelter ourselves So we don't want to feel too cold. We don't want to feel too hot, but in reality th That is feeling life, you know life is all about just being able to 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 sense things and, and perceive them So that's kind of cool Anyways, hopefully everybody's been doing well and staying safe. Um, hope you guys have been able to play some chess, maybe, or do some chess puzzles. I know I've, I've gotten a little bit of chess puzzles done within this past week. Not, not a whole lot, not as much as I wanted to, but still I'm slowly trying to get back into it. Uh, it's just finding the time is a little bit tricky. Uh, today I have something special for you guys. I wanted to show you this new chess set that I just uh, purchased maybe a couple of weeks ago. Uh, not necessarily new for some of you guys, but this is the National Museum of Scotland, the Lewis Chessman chess set. There's a lot of Isle of Lewis chess sets out there. The, the House of Staunton has uh, their own rendition of the Isle of Lewis chess set. A lot of them aren't like exact replicas of the original Isle of Lewis. Um, I wanted to go with what, what looks to be more or less, uh, you know, closely adhering to like the original shape. The original pieces were scanned using a laser scanner and then from those exact uh, dimensions, you know, and those scans, they basically replicated and made this particular set. So let's go ahead and, and take a look. I ordered mine from Amazon, but you can get this particular one off of a lot of different chess distributors. As far as the pricing goes on this particular set, you are looking at about around, I would say, 190 to maybe around 210, just depending on where you're, you're ordering it from, but somewhere around $200 price tag. Uh, when we open the box, 
The very first thing we see is that the packaging is fairly superb. We have this uh, little foam-like protective covering on the very front. And then on the inside, you see that all of the pieces, uh, they are compartmentalized very nicely in this uh, foam type of uh, uh, encasing, as you can see here. This very much so reminds me of the packaging that was done for the, the high polymer resin chest set, the video to which I've shown you guys some time ago. Uh, very nice packaging. I feel like if all the chest sets were, were done like this, this would be very quite, quite nice. So uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these pieces and kind of give you guys an idea of what these pieces are like, you know, and kind of give you guys a little bit of my opinion, whether I, I feel like this is worth the money and uh, kind of go from there. Alrighty, my good friends. So let's go ahead and take a look. You have the king here. Uh, looks like he's co holding a sword, sitting on uh, this, this really elaborate, I guess, throne. Um, really quite a lot of attention to detail. I was uh, quite impressed as far as, you know, the, the way that these pieces look. Um, he's got a crown on top. He's got some kind of a facial hair, beard looking thing. He looks a little bit out of it the way that, you know, like he's not super aggressive. And the queen here also sitting on the throne. Really cool. It's a little bit smaller throne for her. Looks like she's also sitting there in some kind of a, you know, some kind of a thought process going on. Like she's thinking about something, concerned about something. Uh, holding some kind of a, some kind of a, like a, maybe like a, a wine goblet or something. Like one of those wine horns. Next we have the bishop here. The bishop with this, uh, the priest, bishop, holding some kind of a, some kind of a staff or something with the uh, sort of a, the, the, the two, two finger two finger raised up. We have the knight over here, actually have the, the gentleman here on the horse. Uh, pretty cool looking. He's got a what looks like a, a shield on one side and then on the other side is holding some kind of a staff. It's really cool, really cool. Okay, my favorite piece is the rook. Rook definitely looks very concerned, very scared. He's got a shield and he all looks kind of like as if he's like trying to gnaw on the shield. He's got his teeth right over the shield. So it's definitely concerning, you know. Most aggressive looking piece probably in my opinion here. He's got the sword and this pointy looking helmet. Um, about the same height, almost the same height as the knight, just a little bit smaller. And then lastly, we have this pawn, which uh, I guess is a little tombstone uh, with this sort of elaborate elaborate uh, design here. He's got a design on one side that looks like this, and the design on the other side looks a little bit different. Um, all of the pieces have uh, like this black felt on the bottom. The felt is nice. It's not it's not the cheap felt that you know we see a lot, and. Uh, the pictures actually made it seem like the, the set was going to be not as large. When I opened the box, I felt like the, the king, the queen definitely were a little bit bigger than I expected to, which is kind of nice. Um, as far as uh, like what we see here, the largest piece that would be occupying the largest amount of space is going to be obviously the king. And if we push these other pieces to the side, we can see that this board being a 2.25 inch board, the king has enough space for it. So if we set him this way, if we set him that way, if we set him diagonally, there's enough space for the king, but you know, it's uh, a 2.25 is probably gonna be the minimal size for this particular set. So if, if you have a board that's like a 1.75 inch diameter uh, square, you might want to consider getting something that's a little bit bigger. So 2.25 would work well, probably a 2.5 inch uh, board would would work even even better in my opinion. Here's the dark pieces um, There's a couple of different varieties that you can choose from this particular set the dark pieces do look uh, more or less dark I've seen other ones that have a little bit more like a brown dark brown look to them and the dark brown ones I had a friend who told me they kind of look like made out of chocolate or something, you know, and I thought yeah I could agree with you on that, but 
this particular variation that I chose, it's just the dark pieces do look more dark than some of the other varieties that you can that you can find. Once again, you have the the king and a very very similar looking king. Um, I really love these throne. I mean, I, I feel like these these pieces are. I I didn't know what to expect when I uh, when I initially saw these pictures, and and it's been a while. I, I wanted to get the set, but at the same time, I was like, eh, do I really want this? You know. Well, now that I got it, I, I feel like the, the pieces are so well made overall. I, they're just so detailed and so pretty looking. Like when I initially got this, I thought this was only going to be like a like a set that I would just put out to demonstrate, like demonstrate a set. But I feel like you can play with this really quite nicely. Here's the here's the uh, the priest, the bishop here. Same same way. You have the knight. Not a whole lot of differences between between the, the, the pieces and uh, the, the rook, once again, scary looking rook gnawing on, on his shield and it's a little tombstone right here, a little tombstone of a pawn. Quite, quite nice. I mean, it's so pretty. Side by side, I mean, pretty much about the same as far as the way that they look. And now, guys, these are some, some really uh, heavy pieces too. Uh, I read the description and I thought, well, you know, I, I don't know, because they are not made out of wood. They they're made out of some kind of a some kind of a composite material, some some sort of a some combination of, of plastic with something resin maybe. But they feel a lot like stone, and that was I guess that was the intention initially because they did really wanted to make these pieces feel uh, like the original pieces were, and the original ones I believe were made out of stone. Even like the, if you look at the, the detail, more so noticeable on the on the Light King, it's made to look aged because it has all these like little divots and erosions. Uh, so it's made to look like it's it's been, you know, been around for thousands of years. And the weight of these pieces is, is, is first of all, the weight is evenly, feels like it's evenly distributed throughout the pieces. So when you pick up the piece, it doesn't feel like you got weight on only the bottom. It feels like there's weight all throughout. And they're they're heavy. I mean, these guys are nice and heavy. I thought that they were going to be like plasticky and cheap looking. This is, uh, in my opinion, a set that's definitely worth the price tag of about 200 or so, uh, just because of just how nicely the pieces are made. These here are the queens. Just like, look how pretty and defined these are just like so cool so much detail i'm really really quite quite enamored with these particular pieces like the, the detail that goes into like even the chairs and the hair and the the crowns and the very top like you got just something like this a nice really nice um felt underneath of them really nice you could see both of the both of the queens are contemplating. I don't know. It feels like they're kind of depressed looking. Bishops. Bishops kind of looking very similar. Little bishop hats. And then uh, not not as much detail as maybe the queen, but still you you can tell these are bishops. Uh, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to. Like in some of the other sets that are like themed sets, sometimes it's hard to tell which piece is what. But in this particular case, yeah, no, that's a bishop. You know, you don't really have a hard time deciphering which piece is which. So these are also very heavy. Even though they look smaller, they're very heavy. Nice and like sturdy pieces. They're not going to topple over on you or anything like that. Really nice. They feel nice in hand. Just like they feel like like stone you know i know we always talk about the knights and this this is kind of no exception really nice elaborate knights in this case they are knights as in they're warriors on on the horses with uh, as you could see shields nice long shields and you can tell there's a uh, you've got the, the the kind of miniature looking horse and then the you know they're not they're not meant to be exact lifelike replicas the entire set's made in a kind of like a gothic like style they're not meant to look exactly real but i feel like i really like the way that these particular pieces look i i like the way they feel i like the way they look 
like I said, I really didn't know. I was kind of like you guys. I, I didn't know what to expect. And, and when I got this set, I was, I was pleasantly surprised that the set looks this way. One of the cool things that I like about these particular set is that just the eyes, I don't know, I feel there's something, like they have these like bug-like eyes, all of them do, and it's really cool. When you look at some of the other sets, like the, uh, the inspired ones, some, some of the features are different, and, and one of the features that is different is a lot of times the eyes are not as prominent looking. Here we got the two rooks. Not the biggest rooks, but certainly not the lightest ones. These are, even for the small pieces that they are, like they're, they're just, and one thing I love about the rooks is just that, that aggressive looking, like they're scared, that they're ready to fight. They look like they have some kind of mental disorder. They're just all over the place. And that really adds to the fact that they're trying to chew up their shield. It's just a priceless. Well, actually, it's not. It's about two hundred dollars, but it's it's really quite nice. Got the sword ready to go, the shield, and I'm just in love with these particular rooks. I love them. Okay, so lastly, we got these little guys. These are the the, the tombstone pawns. Even for the pawns, they're they're nice and 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 weighty. They're they're not gonna topple over on you or anything like that. They got a nice sense of balance. Pawns also have nice felt on the bottom. It's not a super thick felt like you would see in some of the other, like the, the dark green felt on my Paulson set, but it's also not the cheap set, uh, the cheap felt that we see on some of the, like the, the inexpensive plastic sets or anything like that. So it's kind of in between. Okay, so just to kind of show you guys an idea as far as what this particular set might look like on the board here. And, uh, you know, it, it might look a little bit confusing at first, for sure, especially for people who are not used to playing you know non-standard uh, chess sets like this so you can you can tell that it might take a second here to kind of really get your head around you know which piece is which so this particular one this little guy's the rook um, this is the bishop here's the bishop all the little tombstones are pawns the bigger one that's the the confusing part is that both the king and queen do look very similar because they're both sitting so when you're playing a game, the king's just slightly bigger, slightly more robust, the queen's... But I could see that if you're not used to this particular set, you could potentially get confused as to which, which piece is what. Here's the knight. Knight's very unique looking piece, so you can't really confuse it. So here is also something that I wanted to tie in because I've been doing some chess puzzles and I feel like um, some of the chess puzzles I've done, none of them are really all that elaborate or difficult, but kind of... a uh, showing you guys here uh, this was one of the puzzles I did the other day and I just wanted to share with it with you guys this is a puzzle on chess.com I'm not really sure what the rating of the puzzle was but uh, whenever whenever you do a puzzle one of the things I like about a puzzle is when there is a presence of like a forced combination if you know that there's one particular move out of many that might feel or look a little bit more forced then generally that kind of helps you to decide you know which way you're going to go but you you know you have some things to consider here the last move that um, was done by the white pieces is the the bishop went from here to here and here we can see that our one of the pawns that we have is pretty far out we can certainly see that we, we have a couple of things going on for uh, you know what what we're planning to do here one of which is to potentially move our queen to this spot right over here and give the the king over there a check the problem with that particular move it would be to you know to see that in this particular situation you have that the king could potentially go here in which case you could continue to to check here but maybe not uh, we don't end up wanna you know have the king sort of disappear in this corner but Either way, some things, you know, I'm not really all that good at explaining these things, especially considering that I've never had to explain puzzles in particular. But this puzzle was just really kind of uh, neat and interesting. So what ended up happening is that the queen did end up going here to give a check to, to the king. And then as a result, the I, you know, the king could have gone a couple of different spots, but uh, the king ended up going here to avoid the check. And then... Um, what happened afterwards is, of course, you go in here and you take your bishop and you give him a check second time. If you can always, like, when you're looking through puzzles, they're always one to kind of assume that if you, if you have the ability to 
bring in more pieces towards the attack, generally that's going to be more more likely the, the route that they would want you to take, at least in some situations, as opposed to just you know moving around with with one one two pieces. So if you can if you can sort of uh, you know start to utilize some of the pieces that might like this brook here to otherwise not really have that much use, then that's always good. So the the <clears throat> bishop goes here and uh, the uh, knight goes here to protect, and uh, and the, the bishop takes to give a check here, um, and then the pawn takes over here. That's that's how the puzzle went. And then you go here and you give a check right over here, and apparently that was, I think that was the it, that was it as far as that puzzle went. I'm not gonna be super elaborate in, in trying to show you guys, at least here in the beginning, um, to show you guys, all I really wanted to show you is this particular set and what it looks like when you're actually playing a game. I think that it looks really nice. It's really well made and, and I feel like it's it's just, it probably would take a second to get used to just because uh, you, just like me, we're all kind of sort of used to that Staunton, you know, standard style pieces and uh, that's, you know, our mind is able to hone in on, on pieces like that a lot more easily than, you know, more themed set here. but. I think that once you kind of play with these pieces uh, for a while, you'll get used to it, and then before you know it, it will feel like you know you've you've been playing this set <clears throat> for a long time. Okay, so you won't really even be concerned. Right now, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, which piece is what? You know, but that's because I just had this set for very little. Okay, let me know, guys. Let me know if you want me to do any chess puzzles or not. I've been wanting to actually introduce that idea and do some chess puzzles. At least the ones that I kind of enjoyed, the ones that I liked. Um, none of these puzzles are really all that elaborate, but some of them I just like. So maybe if I could start a video and just say, hey, like, let's do a chess puzzle. So what do you guys think? I think that this particular set's really nice. I feel like I made a good decision to buy this particular one. And the quality of the set is really nice too. Like I said, it feels like stone. It doesn't feel plasticky. It doesn't feel cheap. It's really nice and heavy. Mm, it's a big set. I really, I didn't even know what to expect, but it's a, it's a pretty sizable set. And uh, overall, I, I feel like it's, it's well worth the money. Um, it's definitely not only a set that you'd be more than happy to just like set out as part of your collection, but I also think once you kind of get used to and being able to differentiate, you know, which piece is what, I think it's a, a very much so a playable set, uh, especially for those people who kind of enjoy this particular theme. Um, you will be able to find a lot of different inspired sets, like the Isle of Lewis inspired sets, some of which might also be quite nice. I've seen some made out of metal. I've seen some uh, that were like really quite nice, different shades, different, uh, different colors. This particular one, I, I just, I felt like it was going to be the closest thing to the original set, so that's part of the reason why I ended up getting it. But I feel like if, if you guys already have uh, you know, an Isle of Lewis or a similar set. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your comments are, what your experiences with the set has been as far as like playing it or just what the overall, like if, if you had people seen the set, what did they say or did they like it? Were they interested in it? Um, I, uh, I really enjoyed it. As always, I've, I've enjoyed making this video and I've really enjoyed sharing with you guys. So, uh, Go ahead and uh, hit that like button and uh, comment if you have something to say and uh, uh, be sure to stick around and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye.